I'm Chosen Architect, and this is Mystical Block. Now that I finally have this beautiful base all built up from last episode, which of course, do not forget, if you want to be able to use a copy paste gadget to paste these islands in, all you have to do is check out the description of that video and you should be able to get the copy paste gadget code. And of course I show how to build this whole thing if you happen to miss that episode. But anyways, today we are gonna get into some more Ex Nihilo and get more Ender Pearls. Once we have enough Ender Pearls, I think it is going to be pretty easy for us to set up a mob farm. And that's what I hope to get done today is a nice mob farm. Now, the only thing holding me back is well getting into pearls and there's an easy way to do it. You don't have to set up a mob farm. You don't have to do anything fancy like that. In reality, uh, we can just do it with witch water. So this right here is water that is placed on top of mycelium. Uh, and you can get mycelium from ancient spores. These things right here that you get from sieving dirt. Um, so all you gotta do is place this on some dirt, put some water inside these barrels, and you'll get witch water after a little bit of time. Now, witch water can do a whole bunch of stuff. It can convert mobs. So inside of a mob farm, it can convert skeletons into wither skeletons, which is super useful. But it also can be used to summon mobs. Um, so specifically, it can be used to summon endermen. Uh, so if we take a look at dolls, which is a part of Ex Nihilo, we can take a look at this creeping doll and it says add to a barrel of witch water to spawn an enderman. And this is great. However, it requires black dye. That might be something that may seem a little bit tedious to get. Uh, as normally to get black dye, you would have to go about getting ink sacks. But we don't actually need ink sacks in order to do this. Um, now to get dye essence, I believe the essence doesn't require black dye. So is it gonna be easier to get it this way? Well, technically, I think it might be, but I think the easiest overall way of getting into this would be to get into Batania. Just a tiny bit, just enough to get these petals. Um, and once we have enough petals, we can make any dye of any color, so long as we have this, uh, so long as we have this pestle and mortar. So that's gonna be super simple. Now, how do we go about getting into Batania? Well, it's, it's not super difficult. Let me show you. Now, Batania is quite vast and has a lot of functionality, but one of my favorite parts of it is the fact that you can get a dye of any color from this mod so simply. Uh, it kind of just simplifies dyes altogether. And then once we get some dye seeds, we'll never have to worry about it again. So the cool thing is, is we can make this floral fertilizer. Now it does require a dye to get started, but if we have bone, which I've gotten from my basic mob farm, uh, or you can get from the mining dimension, we can just take this bone and go ahead and get us a bit of dye here and turn this into white dye. I mean, it's just as simple as that, right? Um, and then what we need to do is combine that dye with some bone mill and we should be ready to go. Um, so in here, we'll just simply put the bone mill and we'll do four of this and then that will get us the floral fertilizer. And we shouldn't need a whole bunch of this um, because what it's going to do is going to generate a flower, these flowers from Batani, the mystical flowers, it's going to generate them. And it, oh shoot, it even bone mills them, uh, and giving us double tall, which is going to essentially, uh, allow us to, uh, to get twice as much from this. Um, and I believe this is the version that when you punch it, you don't get it. Um, now in the newer versions of Batania, if you punch it, you do get the flower in our case here. We're gonna actually need shears. Um, so yeah, we might as well get some shears up and running for this. So with our shears made, we can go ahead and run through here and we should be able to grab all of our double tall flowers that have been generated. One of them being specifically the black flower. Uh, and this is gonna be pretty cool because what we can do, since apparently when we walk around we bone mill, we get four petals from these tall variants. We place it down and we just kind of run or we twerk. It's going to grow it. This is then going to give me another one. And now we've doubled from just one. Uh, so I believe you quadruple every time you grow this plant. So uh, it's pretty nice. It's a renewable source of all of these different dyes. This is probably gonna be the easiest way to get our dye seeds up and running. So I'm just going to get all of these converted into petals. And uh, from this point, since this is all I needed to do in the Batania side of things, uh, outside of just turning them into dye, which I'm going to do when I make the dye seed, uh, is simply just make the dyes. 
So uh, once we have the pedals, we just need to make one of these. And so this is just going to be, it looks like just some wood. Very, very simple to make. So there we go. Oh, actually it's, uh, it's missing something in the middle. I have no idea, but we're definitely missing a bowl. I know that. So now with this in our inventory, it's as easy as us going, okay, this black die gets used this way. Bam, all I have to do is click that to make the die. Of course, like I said, I'm gonna be making the die seeds, which is gonna be a lot easier because now we have all of the individual die colors and we only need four of each, I believe, to make the combination. So in just like that, bam, I have all the stuff for die seeds. These are one of my favorite seeds. So now that I have these seeds, getting ourselves all of the other things is gonna be pretty easy because we've already gotten ourselves nether seeds and uh, this is gonna make things a lot easier. And I should be able to summon as many dolls as I need. Uh, the only problem I think I'm going to run into is bone meal, but we do have quite a bit of it now from our, our basic mob farm. Um, so we should be ready to go. And this right here is why die seeds are some of my favorite. Look how colorful these things are. Oh my goodness. Now I think the only other seed I'm going to need for this now that I look at it is going to be glowstone seeds. And this is going to be a little bit. I don't think I need a crazy amount for this. Uh, like, let's see. Oh yeah, it just requires four glowstone to make this. So there we go. It's at this point, I think most seeds are going to be pretty well available for us. Uh, we should be able to make a seed. I think any time that I'm going to need something, after I have produced it, I should make a seed for it. All of these seeds are gonna be combined later on. We're gonna be able to put them inside of pots and just let them go automatically. Of course, some things I'm going to want farmed with uh, such things as cyclic, like cyclic as a harvester. Um, which will be pretty nice. And I almost guarantee that we could use something to accelerate the growth of these crops. We'll see how that's going to go. I'm thinking that maybe the watering can might work. That used to be a, a fantastic way of doing things, uh, but we'll have to see how the watering can works in this pack. So I think at this point, this is the culmination of everything that we have done thus far, all combined together. Uh, now, emeralds, of course, are going to be the best use in this uh, particular setup because we'll get more of our base porcelain dolls for using that. Uh, so as you can see, we have all of the porcelain dolls ready to go. And I just need to make some black dye. Bam, there we have tons of it because of all that dye essence. And now we can make this particular doll. Now this is gonna be helpful for several reasons. We can also make a blaze doll. And I believe this will allow me to get blaze rods, which is gonna be pretty awesome. Now this is done differently. This goes in a bucket of lava. However, you do need base blaze powder to get into this dimension. But as you can see, the ingredients are all the same. So this is why we got the nether seeds. This is why we got the glowstone seeds, the redstone seeds, all of those things combined together. So that way we can farm these mobs in this particular way, which I think is gonna be easier than waiting for a mob farm to work, uh, which can be kind of tedious. Now I have all these mobs, and I think at this point, I should probably start making a better tinker's tool or a better tinker's weapon that is, um, and at least get some basic upgrades on it such as maybe luck, so we can potentially get more ender pearls out of this operation. Uh, and also be able to kill them faster because that's gonna pose a little bit of a problem when I just have a stone ax. Now to make this tinker's tool, I'm gonna need a little bit of obsidian, so I might as well at this point mine up enough obsidian to make the obsidian seeds. But I need obsidian so I can make this interesting material from tinkers called Nawaddle. It's pretty darn cool and it causes a bleeding effect. And I really wanna utilize this uh, in our tool. Now, I think what I'm gonna try and do is go for a solium head. Um, this is going to allow me to get the uh, the actual souls when we start working with that with uh, mystical agriculture, we'll be able to use this same sword instead of a solium dagger to collect souls from our mobs. That's gonna be pretty cool. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a bone uh, handle. And then we're also gonna make this a cleaver, or uh, I think it's not called a, specifically a cleaver, it's called a... Uh, yeah, it's called a cleaver. We're gonna be making a cleaver, so that way we also get an innate beheading uh, effect added to this, making us able to collect more mob heads. Now, some of the basics of getting into tinkers, now that I have all that obsidian, we should be ready to go. Some of the basics is, well, we need to put gold in here, and that gold is going to allow me to make casts. I specifically need these specific casts that you see right here. Uh, one is gonna be a rod, then we have a plate, and then we need the actual blade. That can be found all in here. So right here is a plate, and then we have the actual tough rod, which is gonna be this. And then the other piece that we are going to need is going to be the broad blade. Um, now, these things, to be able to make a pattern and be able to cast certain materials out of the uh, furnace for some of these products, 
Well, we have to make a cast, so I'm going to go ahead and make a cast here. And then this cast can be now used indefinitely, which is really cool. Uh, same for this. We're probably going to need a cast for that. And then, of course, the rods as well. I just want to get a cast for all of these individual tool parts. It would probably be wise of me to just make a cast for everything, including all the armor pieces, because that might be useful as well. Now that I have all of the components made, I can take a look in here and I want to make this broad blade part. And I read right here, it says pattern cost is eight. That means that it's going to cost eight ingots of whatever I'm planning on putting into this or material I'm going to make it out of. It's going to cost eight of them. Um, so in my case, I just smelted up some iron. This gets me solium ingots, which are going to be pretty darn cool. I can put this in here. That's going to melt them down. And then I should be able to now place in our broad sword in here. And as soon as this is ready to cast out, which it looks like it's just a moment, I can just click that and I can now fill this with solium. Uh, and like I said, this has a really cool innate ability that's going to allow us to use it for mystical agriculture. Now, I think for the rest of this, what I want to do is I actually want to use it in a Nahuatl. Uh, which is basically um, obsidian infused wood. I want to make it for one part of the tough handle and then of course the large plate as well. So this is going to involve obsidian. So I'm just going to need, I think it was four and then three, so seven. And then uh, we can combine this with planks. Now this is going to be kind of different. We're going to need seven planks. Uh, and when I place this obsidian in here, that's going to get all smelted down. Now, we're not going to cast into a normal cast. We're going to cast into this casting basin, which I've added here. Of course, you can have it on the side. And I've placed a log in here. And then once this is all melted, we can then start to cast onto the wood. And this is going to make that Nawaddle material. Now, this is going to be one part of our tool rod. I'm also going to take this... Uh, bone right here and I'm gonna make a tough tool rod handle out of bone This is gonna give us piercing one which is gonna allow us to of course uh, Have a piercing effect through armor, which is really really helpful I think this is gonna be an overall decent sword especially for early materials since we haven't really gone to the end or anything like that So this is effectively what the no planks look like and we can go ahead and cast that into here as you can see It's all melted it takes a little bit of time to cure just like any of the other tools would take a uh, time to cure but once it's done, this is some tough material. Uh, it's really cool looking as well. It has this like purple effect to it that I think is pretty nice. Uh, and it's breaking. It's like hardness is obsidian level. So yeah, it's a pretty hard block to break. You have to use a diamond axe in order to break it. It is uh, pretty nice. Now for this wooden material, we should be able to do the same thing and put it in here, I think. Oh wait, no, we actually have to cast this do we have to cast this onto a wooden tool part oh i bet we do and there's no way to redo this oh okay so we don't need the blocks we have to cast this out onto wooden tool parts okay so back here i have my part builder i'm just going to make wooden cast for these and then infuse it with the obsidian so this is how you do it so yes you need to place the wood cast in and then it will fill it with enough obsidian in order to complete its craft. Oh, there we go. And so as soon as this is filled up, which takes a lot, by the way, and uh, they're using, I think, the one probe in here, uh, which for some reason, it doesn't show any of the liquids of anything um, for some reason. So here we go. We have all of our pieces that I'm going to use in order to make this. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this set up. We're going to have the Solium blade. Like I said, is going to be fantastic. And then we can choose where we want these rods based on how it looks. That's kind of a cool looking sword. We can swap this around and make uh, the top part have a white bind on it. I kind of like that, to be fair. This is going to give us a uh, soul siphon one, um, lacerating two, which causes the target to bleed. This is what the Nawaddle is going to do. The piercing is coming from the bone and uh, the severing comes from the overall uh, tool itself, which is a cleaver. Um, this is going to have an attack damage of 12, which is pretty darn cool and pretty nice. Going to have some pierce. And like I said, it's going to do some extra damage. And not only that, it's going to be a pretty useful tool whenever we start to uh, process all of our mobs for our seeds. Now, of course, I can't leave myself completely naked here. I'm going to have to get myself some armor. Uh, so I was thinking it would look kind of cool if I just made an entire set 
of Nawadal armor here from uh, the Constructs Armory. Um, so this would be pretty cool looking. It gives us Prickly, which I'm assuming is going to uh, cause some sort of uh, like thorns damage to the mobs. And we can make an entire set that uses both. And it seems like it's better than diamond if we do this. Uh, to make the armor, we need a couple of things. We need the base armor piece. And then we also need the mail. Um, so both of these together, we can use to mix and match different materials. I think my base, though, I'm going to use Nawaddle. And then I need to figure out what would be pretty cool as a secondary material. What's interesting is looking through all of the different trims and seeing what the armor du uh, durability, or looking through the mail, what all the durabilities are and the actual armor ratings. Nawaddle is actually the best sort of modifier here. It's the best thing to put on top of it because it's going to give us the most overall armor. Uh, that's going to be pretty darn cool. So yeah, it doesn't give us any enhanced movement speed. Um, it's actually going to lower our movement speed, but we already have fast movement speed anyways. So I'm not super worried about that. Now let's get this armor going. Now for this entire set, I'm going to need 26 obsidian. Super easy. Like, and then we're going to look pretty nice. So, and just like that, all of my pieces are now ready to go. And this is cool. This is a, an, an armor mod that is a part of Tinker's. It's added on. And there we go. So this is going to give us, uh, let's see... Base armor of 2.5. Of course, that can be increased later on. And then just peace. And I just think this is going to look kind of cool. We don't need a crazy amount of armor. It's not like we're fighting mobs all the time. But whenever we do go to the nether, we are going to need some sort of protection. And this should help. This is going to be pretty close to diamond. It's not a completely diamond level. But the fact that we look like we're covered in this uh like wooden obsidian kind of thing i think that looks pretty cool it also appears like our armor can give us looting which is pretty nice uh we can give ourselves more looting effect that's that's really powerful this seems all to be very very powerful so now it does appear that i can actually put looting on my chest piece and also i think on my sword as well so it's going to look just like this uh it doesn't appear that this gives me the looting Maybe it's because I don't have a particular slot available, but there it goes. Interesting. I can put it on here, but I, I can't put it on my chest, even though it showed it in JEI. Okay, either way, uh, I still believe Quartz is the way to go uh, for the rest of our ability slots. Um, I should be able to tip this with Quartz, and that's going to give me even more attack damage. And I think as much of this as I can get on it, the better. So there we go. We are maxed out and we have it sharper. Now it does 15.8 damage. This bad boy is ready to kill some Endermen. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, this apparently, there it goes. It is available. It just for some reason was all bugged out. There we go. Let this build up. This should summon the Endermen. Oh, and they spawned. Okay, this one went up here. We should be able to kill these guys pretty fast. As you can see, it's taking like a blood damage, like a bleeding effect. There we go. Two shots easily killed it. And look at that. We're getting enough ender pearls here that this made this all worth it. Four ender pearls from three endermen. I would call that pretty darn good. And it didn't take too much to kill them. It is now this time I effectively have everything I need for a mob farm. And uh, that means I can go through the entire process that is getting a really nice mob farm set up. One that actually runs no matter if I'm around or not. And is going to be able to create XP for me, which is going to be amazing. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to need an XP drain. So this is why I needed those ender pearls. This is how I'm going to be able to effectively get the experience off of myself. Um, and I'm going to need this experience as soon as I put this tank together. I'm going to need this experience in order to craft up the different types of GM chicken feeds, which will allow me to get the rotten egg that I need in order to make this mob farm. So uh, if I put this together, I now have a tank that I can stand on and it's going to drain all the experience from me. And just having nearly 30 levels is a lot of experience. More than four buckets, it should be, anyways. Um, and uh, we should be able to take this experience, if I make some buckets, and we should be able to craft this uh, cursed GM chicken feed. But let's see if this is enough. One, two, three, and four. 
easily enough, and I still have more levels that can be dumped into here. I can always get these levels back out, by the way, with a, uh, a faucet that's from the same mod, this thing right here, and tap. Uh, and this will allow me to turn it on and get my experience back, as you can see. Pretty cool. Now, utilizing the Mob Grinding Utils mod, let's make this cursed GM chicken feed. And yes, it is cursed because we're going to need to take this and, well, feed it to a chicken. And I don't think the chicken is going to enjoy this much. I promise no chickens were harmed in the making of this episode, as I always have to preface because, um, well, maybe that chicken is a okay. I, you know what? I, um, yeah, anyways. So now with that chicken exploded and out of the way, I'm going to tear down this mob farm. And uh, after I get this all tore down, I'm going to clear out the area a little bit more. And this is where I want to set up our new mob farm. Now back over here to prep up some of the things that I'm going to need for this space. Um, and that's going to be a mob masher. This is ultimately going to be what actually kills our mobs. Um, and it's pretty straightforward to make. As you can see, the iron spikes are the hardest part to kind of put together as it's just a bunch of swords that we're going to have to craft. Um, but a lot of people I've talked to, especially the Discord and things like that, um, that have been playing other mod packs and, and such, didn't actually know that there's this thing called Tinted Glass. This blocks the light, um, but also is wither resistant. So we can actually later on build a giant uh, area to contain the wither in and could kill the wither inside of this if we wanted to. Of course, there's other means and easier ways to kill the wither, but this is wither proof, uh, as, as it does state right here in its tooltip. Now, another thing that I definitely want is the Eye of Ender, or the Absorption Hopper that uses an Eye of Ender, I should say. Um, and uh, the Absorption Hopper is 100% going to be necessary, because this is what's going to collect all the drops and throw them into a storage for us. Now, when it comes to moving the mobs around, it's going to be a combination of the Mob Grinding Utils Mob Fan and this right here. However, I need to get a hold of a slime ball for these to be able to make these basic vector plates. Um, and to get the vector plate, I can actually use create to get some dough and then we can combine that. That's probably the easiest way. As you can see, I should be able to craft a bucket with the wheat, meaning I just need a millstone. Um, so it being a simple millstone, we should be able to craft just enough material or that millstone. So in order for me to quickly get this up and running, which we probably would get slime from our base mob farm, uh, but just to get this quickly, what I can do is attach this to it, which is about as simple as it's going to get. Um, and then we can take a hopper and just hopper the wheat into the top here, and then just rotate this with our hands. <laughs> That's probably gonna be the easiest way for us to get early, early slime. Um, so this shouldn't take too long to crush. We probably already have some. There's some milled wheat. And then we just need water, which thankfully we have water essence, which makes that incredibly easy to do. And bam, we have a dough ball. And then we take the dough ball and just provide it with some lime dye. And bam, we have ourselves a slime ball. So I can easily make those vector plates. Now, as far as a mob farm goes, this is about as simple as it's going to get. Now, that's a modification of how I normally do this farm as I'm leaving myself a little bit of room for witch water uh, that we can potentially set up later on. But what I basically have here is the five by five that the rotten egg is going to produce the dirt for. And then this fan has a huge area. It is two upgrades, so it's going to be pushing all the mobs up to here. And then these vector plates are going to make sure the mobs go here. Later on, we can have water uh, the, like witch water right here, which is going to make sure the mobs get pushed through the witch water and then still get pushed into the mob masher and it will kill them. Um, so this is going to be pretty effective. Now I do need to get a little bit of redstone going on. Um, and I think what I can do is this will allow me to shut this off in an emergency. Um, so down here I will put a lever and I should be able to turn on the redstone that's underneath here, like so. And then we just need to make sure that this redstone makes it up into this block. Actually, you know what? An easy way to do this that would just completely simplify this whole process is using this remote lever. Um, so I should be able to make a remote lever. There we go. And it just needs a button. This cool. This tool is uh, kind of cool. So any lever that is in our world, uh, we should be able to bind this to. Uh, for example, there's going to be a lever that is underneath this block. 
and we can bind this to it and activate this lever. So shift right click, now the position saved, and then we can just right click anywhere, and then we should be able to, here soon, rename this to like uh, our mob farm, and then we just keep it in our inventory. That way we don't have to worry about any complex redstone here. I think it's about as simple as it gets. Now, of course, at the top here, this is supposed to be able to turn the mob farm on and off. Uh, so it's just a, a simple redstone that's just on top of this redstone lamp, giving it a signal to be able to turn this on and off. Hopefully it works. I have had issues in the past with the uh, the mob grinding utils dirt not working with this. Um, and this being an older version, I don't know if it's been updated. So I don't know if this is necessarily going to be able to shut the mob farm on and off. Um, so now that this is ready to go, we should be able to get our absorption hopper in. And this is where we're going to need to define the area for it as well. So we need to figure out what these positions do. So we need to figure out how our offsets are working. So it looks like I got our offsets set exactly where I want it. Look at that. That's like perfect. So that's nice. That way it keeps everything contained to this and it's not going to pull any of our items that we accidentally drop out here. So with that done, we need to now figure out what direction the sides are on. Um, so if we take a look over here, we're going to be, this is the west side. So let's have the west side be fluids, which are going to be our XP. And that means our east side is going to be items over here. Um, and uh, we should be able to get some sort of drawer system set up. I think I might set the drawer system just right over here on the wall, maybe. Or we could route this somewhere else. And by the way, I, I did use iron blocks back there. We have so much iron. We can make infinite iron. So I was like, I thought iron blocks would look kind of cool. Actually, I bet Chipped has some really interesting textures that I could have used as well for this. So I have the drawer network all set up, except we have to get it connected. So I need a drawer controller. This is what's going to actually get the items fed into it. And I have the drawer controller set over here because we're going to use trim. Trim is like a pipe for the regular storage drawers. Um, now there is a new mod called uh, Functional Storage, which has wireless access to the drawer controller, but in good old fashioned storage drawers mod, you use trim to connect your drawer networks together. Um, so it can't be any longer than 16 blocks away, so you have to keep that in mind, but this now should connect in. So for example, if I put a little bit of cobble in here, I should now be able to click the cobble in here, and it's now made it into this drawer. So essentially, all of it has now been connected like a pipe. And then we can just go ahead and cover this all up. So without further ado, just make sure that that is on. I'll go ahead and place this in the center block. That is going to get the mob spawning in. And then we just need our dark glass, right? Hopefully no mobs get out. Or tinted glass. Goodness. So apparently, yeah, the light does not seem like it is shutting this mob farm off which is kind of unfortunate. Let's go ahead and turn the mob grinder on. And all of the mob drops should now be collected and we see that there are drops that are being added to the storage drawer. And as soon as I turn this off, it should start spawning faster. And we should get everything in here. We should get slime, skeletons, all the goods, every mob, except for the, the nether mobs, should spawn in here. Huh. Enderman. Oh, that's so nice. Now we'll have infinite ender pearls. So with this, guys, I hope you had a fantastic time watching today's episode. Uh, of course, all of this setup is going to help us excel here into the future. And uh, we're going to get into a lot more mods now because we have access to all of these items, including ender pearls, which I think was one of the biggest things holding us back. So guys, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And of course now, it is time to thank the supporter of today's video. And that huge thanks, my friends, is going to go out to Sheepy over on the Discord. Thank you so much for your amazing support in supporting me over on Discord, You're doing Discord Premium, which is amazing. Thank you so, so very much in supporting me in one of the best ways possible. Guys, I appreciate you. I'll see you, of course, in the next one. And as always, Thanks for watching. Bye. Just a little bonus, but uh, I did go ahead and clean this all up and uh, added some leaves and it really makes this stand out.